events and issues shaping our community. This is Comcast Newsmakers. Hi, Spiro Canton here on the Plaza of the State Capitol with Comcast Newsmakers as we delve into different types of children's issues this month. Now on this hour, we're talking about the infant mortality rate and ways we can reduce it. And our guest, Representative Perry Thurston from District 93 in Broward County, and we thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Ms. Ken. It, it's something that uh, I th is very close to many, many parents' uh, minds as far as reducing the infant mortality rate. Uh, how are we going to help here? Well, the, the issue is that they're looking at making some changes and moving the Healthy Start program to the counties. We would like to keep it where it's at because it's been working. Since 1991, with the introductory of the Healthy Start program, Program, we've seen a reduction in infant mortality and a reduction in the low birth rates of babies. So we're, as we address all the other children's issues, we want the focus to be on making sure that we don't lose any of the gains that we've accomplished. And, and I think that by putting an emphasis on what we've done in the past and making sure we don't go backwards, that's a good step. What do you think the main factor is in reducing the infant mortality rate? Well, I think what's, what Healthy Start has done is emphasize prenatal care, emphasize the fact that you have to make sure from the beginning and the onset of the pregnancy that you're doing what's required to make sure that the babies are healthy. You know, there are all types of issues that we have with school and criminal justice, but if you start out with a healthy child, then you're going to avoid some of the issues as you go along the way. You think the key is keeping it where it is, not sending it to the county? Well, well keeping it where it is, and if it's going to be changed to, I think the plan is to change it over to some of the health departments to make sure that everything is in place so that there's not a drop-off. I think that's the key. Now, but again, you know, clearly we've got other issues involving children, right. but that's one of the key ones that we want to deal Another with. Another controversial issue you're involved in is Senate Bill uh, 6. Absolutely. And that, that seems to be getting a lot of emotions going. It, it has gotten a lot of emotions and going. And explain what that is all about. Well, what it's about is uh, changing the structure of the profession of teachers as we know it. It's a total revamping of how we uh, pay the teachers, how we train teachers, and I think that when you're having such a, a remarkable change in the program, you don't do it in such a head-on collision. It's something that you have to gradually get into. The emphasis really should not be so much on the teachers but on, on the children. But when you affect the teachers and their situation is unstable, it can't help but have an effect on the children. And, and that's what our concern and of is. Of course, this is merit pay. Merit pay, tying the teachers uh, paid to the learning gains of the children. And, and the problem with that is that there are a lot of variables that we're dealing with that the teacher in the classroom has no control of. This teacher may have a child that's coming from a two-parent home, but this teacher may have a child who's actually homeless, who's living out of the car. And so you can't judge both of those teachers on the learning gains of that children, of that child who has so much going on in their lives. That the, that the I guess the ultimate goal of that bill is accountability. How do you accomplish that uh, without uh, holding the personal teachers accountable? Well, I think that you there's a, all types of ways in terms of accountability. You know, what be, might be gains for one child may be uh, a, a bad assessment for the gains for another child. I think it's going to come down to an individual perspective. You know, you may have a child that only makes marginal gains, but that's because that's all they can accomplish. So the, the, the children should be taken in consideration when you're all actually evaluating the, the teacher. Absolutely. Not only the children, but the factors surrounding that particular child. And, and know, the school I, as well, I would and suspect. And school as well. But I, I do think that there's a need for accountability. I think that there's a need for weeding out teachers that might not be doing the job that they're doing. And it all shouldn't right. take forever, but it's just how you accomplish it that I think we need to take a Okay, well, thanks so much. This hour's newsmaker, Representative Perry Thurston from District 93 of Broward County. I'm Spiro Canton. As you can tell, Children's Week is heating up behind us here on the Plaza of the State Capitol. We thank you for letting us be a part of your day.